Are you a nursing student that wants to cut your study time by over 60%? Well, you can head over to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube and sign up for free. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna have a look at an overview of the endocrine system. So the endocrine system is a collection of cells and glands that produce and release hormones. Now hormones are just chemicals that jump into the bloodstream and can have their effect in quite distant areas of the body, at least distant in comparison to the tissues that produce and release them. This is quite different to the nervous system, which also is a communication system that controls physiological activity like the endocrine system, but the nervous system is fast, it's direct, and it's short acting. Now, the endocrine system is slow, it's indirect, and it's quite long acting. And so that's some of the differences, even though they're both communication networks that control physiological activity. Now the cells or glands that produce and release these hormones, that's what we're gonna have a look at today. And we're gonna have a look at some of the names of those hormones and generally speaking, what they do in the body. So to begin, we should start at the top and move our way down. Now the top obviously gonna to be our brain. There's a really important tissue in our brain or endocrine gland called the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus sits at the base of our brain underneath the thalamus, that's why it's called hypothalamus, and I've drawn it up here. This is the hypothalamus. You can see there's an extension of the hypothalamus that has two parts. This is called the pituitary gland, and the two parts are the lobes. So you've got an anterior lobe and a posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. Now simply what happens is the hypothalamus, you can think of as the master regulator or control center for all these endocrine tissues in the body, or at least most of them. What the hypothalamus does is it produces and releases a number of important hormones. These hormones include thyrotropin releasing hormone, corticotropin releasing hormone, growth hormone releasing hormone, prolactin releasing hormone, and gonadotropin releasing hormone. Big names, but this is what happens. Predominantly the hypothalamus will produce and release these hormones, and they'll travel through this blood supply that connects the hypothalamus to the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. Then, as it moves through, it stimulates hormones in the anterior pituitary gland to be produced and released. Thyrotropin releasing hormone stimulates the release of thyroid stimulating hormone. And what that does is it travels to the thyroid. Now the thyroid is this gland, endocrine gland, that hugs the front of the trachea. And what the thyroid does is it produces thyroid hormone. And the thyroid hormone is T3 and T4. T3 is triiodothyronine and T4 is thyroxine. Predominantly, T4 ends up turning into T3 anyway. And the activity or function of these thyroid hormones is to undergo certain metabolic processes, so metabolism. It allows for appropriate development, especially embryological development. And also stimulates catecholamine release. Catecholamine, catecholamines are like noradrenaline and adrenaline, or norepinephrine and epinephrine. So that's the thyroid hormones and the thyroid function. Started with the hypothalamus with thyrotropin releasing hormone, moved to the anterior pituitary where it stimulated thyroid stimulating hormone, that jumped into the bloodstream, moved to the thyroid to release these hormones. When these hormones are released and their level starts to go up, they actually go back to the hypothalamus and have a inhibitory effect. This is called negative feedback. If their levels are low, that gets released. If their levels are high, that gets inhibited. Struggling to stay afloat during nursing school? Let me help you achieve our 96% pass rate by heading over to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube and signing up for free.